strategy games have always been a staple to PC gaming, and we have had some amazing releases, but also some massive disappointments in the past. Hello, my name is Gamerzak, and welcome to my 30 upcoming PC strategy games in 2018 and 2019 list. Now, over 30 games are mentioned in this video, but I know a lot of you are going to want to focus on RTS and 4Xs. So the main 15 in this list are those, and then there's 15 turn-based tactics and other strategy genre games mentioned after plus a few bonus games mentioned at the end, so be sure to watch all the way through so you'll be prepared to strategize your next year of gaming. Alright, let's get started. First, we've got Warhammer 40k Gladius Relics of War by Proxy Studios. Explore, expand, exploit, exterminatus. Warhammer 40k is getting a 4x turn-based strategy game. Four unique factions including Astra Militarum, Space Marines, Orcs, and Necrons will compete for resources using their own tech trees, units, and heroes. 40k seems to be a great fit for the 4x genre, but we'll have to keep an eye on this one to make sure it actually turns out good with its own approach and not take too much from other games like Civilization. What we've seen so far looks good, and if they pull it off this could be just what the 40k community is looking for. Next we have Starborn Sovereign Space by Solid Clouds. Here's another take on the grand strategy 4X with the addition of real-time multiplayer in the form of a kind of MMO with thousands of players. Build your space empires alongside other players and vie for control of the galaxy. There's also a card-driven system which I know immediately strikes fear in many strategy fans, but however you feel about cards, these are used to upgrade your stations and fleets, gain bonuses and specialize your empire while promising replay value. It'll also be free to play so you'll be able to easily check it out for yourself once it's available, but this game is going to need a large player base to fulfill its potential. Who knows, this one might turn out to be one of the better ones. Then we've got AI War 2 by Arkan Games. This one is a grand strategy RTS where you face an overwhelming, inhuman enemy who has conquered the galaxy. Steal as much technology as you can and control enough territory to fortify your bases and launch attacks, but the more you attack, the more attention you draw to yourself. Solo and co-op multiplayer will be available in gameplay that prioritizes smarts instead of reflexes against a uniquely behaving AI. They raised just under $100,000 on Kickstarter and development updates happen very regularly, so we'll most likely see this get better and better over time, however not everyone is going to be into something like this. Have a closer look for yourself and see if you like what you see. Next up we have Driftland The Magic Revival by Star Drifters. Basically, this one is like the old game Majesty, but in the sky. Obtain magical powers and connect flying islands as you develop your empire in a procedural world. There's a magic-based economy, you can terraform the scattered islands, you can tame dragons, and you control through goals rather than direct micro in a single-player campaign or multiplayer. Considering it's not a really known dev team, it's now in early access on Steam, and it's not that expensive, it sounds like all the red flags of a bad game, but those who have been trying it seem to be surprised by the quality and giving very positive reviews. If you liked Majesty, you're probably gonna like this one. And then we have Forge Battalion by Petroglyph. Towards the end of the 21st century, climate change devastated the world and a military force called the Collective took control. You are part of the Resistance Group, customize your unique faction, develop blueprints for factories and units, and unlock a persistent tech tree through a dynamic story campaign or in online multiplayer. At first glance, the visual style is going to put off some strategy fans, but if that's not an issue for you, then gameplay looks like it has potential. The customization of units and buildings can add a new level of skill, but it could also make the game a bit confusing if not done right. Early access is meant to start in early 2018, so we'll get a better look then. Next we've got Call to Arms by Digital Mind Soft. An RTS set in modern times with the interesting ability to be able to zoom in and control a unit in third or first person action mode. Two playable factions as you conquer rural areas, factories, stations and towns to use the environment to your advantage. It was in early access through 2017 and received mixed reviews on Steam, but more recently it's shifted to mostly positive. Overall it looks like it has a lot of potential, but not everyone is going to be into the zoomed in action mode. There is a free to play version of the game and a paid for full version with more content. Which I'd say is admirable as demos tend to be a thing of the past and this will allow you to jump in to see if you like the game yourself before buying anything. 
Then we have Zero AD by Wildfire Games. A free open source historical RTS that's a lot like Age of Empires and Rise of Nations. There are unique civilizations, cross-platform play between Windows, Linux and OS X, and citizen soldiers where all your units are kind of workers, including the military units. Being open source, it's all set for language support, map creation and modability. The open source release of the game technically started in 2009, so this isn't a project that's concluding anytime soon and is ongoing. Though with the revival of Age of Empires, there is now a bigger market for this sort of classic historical RTS, and Zero AD is very much playable right now. It's free and definitely worth a look as the last update added a lot to the game, including bringing multiplayer to the masses. Next up we've got Bannerman by Pathos Interactive. Continuing the classic historical RTSs, here we have another but this time we're going semi-fantasy with an interesting focus on environmental control. Cause landslides to create ramps, take control of magic powers and freeze lakes, all while playing through the campaign or in multiplayer. There's a short free demo that shows off the basics of the gameplay, but it's just kind of a tutorial, and from me trying it, it does feel like a solid RTS. Though until we see more, there's always a chance it turns out to be a bit lackluster. And then we have Empires Apart by Destiny Bit. For one more classic medieval RTS, this one has a big focus on online play, claiming to be bringing the genre to the modern age. There's the expected resource collection of food, wood, stone and gold as you build an army as the unique civilization you chose. The multiplayer aspect is taking inspiration from MMOs and MOBAs, where certain civilizations have certain roles like Rush, Boom and Support Civs. Although this is a completely new game, I can't help but be reminded of Age of Empires Online, which some loved and others didn't, and the art style is going to split people based on preference too. And again, with the revival of classic Age of Empires through the definitive editions, I'm curious if what these games are doing is enough to set themselves apart. And next we have Northgard by Shiro Games. After years of exploration, brave Vikings discover a new land filled with mystery, danger and riches. Play one of many clans in a kind of banished plus settlers gameplay in competitive multiplayer or a single player campaign. Build your settlement, assign jobs to your villagers, manage resources and survive the winter. This has been in early access and it's been received very positively. Exploring the zones on the map can reveal unique and useful resources or challenges that need to be dealt with. And in multiplayer it can be surprisingly skill based with room for strategy and a little bit of micro. Overall, Northgard has been a very solid experience and once a single player campaign releases, it'll definitely be worth checking out if you haven't already. Then we've got Ancestors Legacy by Destructive Creations. A historical RTS set in the 10th to 12th century with a strong emphasis on tactical actions in both single player and multiplayer. Single player missions are based on historical events which occurred in these dark ages. Four playable nations use terrain to your advantage, intense multiplayer battles all running on Unreal Engine 4. Visually, the game looks impressive at a glance, and gameplay seems to be a solid RTS with base building, resource management, and large conflicts with squad-based controls. There's a lot of promise here, and if you like the setting and they manage to make it work, it's going to be one for you. Next we have Total War Arena by Creative Assembly. Wage war in 10v10 multiplayer battles in the ancient world. A free-to-play team-based strategy game based around fast-paced RTS battles controlling 300 units each, clashing on the battlefield as you level up, unlock skills and upgrade weapons and armor throughout the three factions. Initially being called a Total War MOBA, expectations were low for this game, but the developers have been keeping up with opinions and recently people who have tried the game are saying positive things. It's nice when things turn out better than expected, though it's not the same as other Total War games which may or may not be to your liking. And then we have Total War Saga Thrones of Britannia by Creative Assembly. Now for another Total War game, but this one's going to be more like the main games, just set in a more specific time period. The year is 875 AD and the English King Alfred has mounted a heroic defense at the Battle of Eddington against the Viking invasion. Kings will rise, one will rule. Huge real-time battles with the turn-based campaign, we can have some guesses about the game, but right now almost nothing has been revealed. The cinematic trailer is cool, but until gameplay is shown off, I'd not make any judgments, though it is scheduled for a 2018 release so we should see something soon. 
Next up we've got Age of Empires 4 by Relic Entertainment, and as a note Age of Empires Definitive Edition by Forgotten Empires. Age of Empires is officially coming back. Not much has been seen for Age of Empires 4, but from the trailer, based on the original plan, and the fact that the developer is Relic, the fourth iteration is most likely meant to be a World War 1 or 2 game. What we do know is the previous games are getting remastered, with Age of Empires 1 Definitive Edition being developed by Forgotten Empires, and was delayed as it wasn't ready. And all the other games are supposed to be remastered too. Unfortunately, it seems like these games will all be Windows 10 exclusives, and when it comes to the games that already have HD versions, like Age of Empires 2, how will a new Definitive Edition stack up to the Steam version that has a thriving multiplayer scene? Either way, it's good to see the game come back, and we can hope that the remasters and Age of Empires 4 turn out to be great and not clunky messes. Then we have Iron Harvest by King Art Games. Set in the alternate reality of the 1920s, tradition clashes with progress as early mechanized conflicts get old school mechs and bots in this RTS. Throughout the dynamic levels you'll be able to find your own way of achieving your objectives as you play as one of the three playable factions. This one looks really impressive, and development updates are frequent, interesting, and respond to community feedback, which is always nice. It's scheduled for a 2019 release, so we should see more as we go along, and I'd always be cautious until things get more clear, but I'd definitely keep an eye on this one. And now we've gone through the main 15, let me list out 15 tactics games that are on the way. Battletech, a turn-based tactical mech combat from the original creators of Battletech and Mech Warrior. Phantom Brigade, lots of giant robots and turn-based tactics, deep customization and destructible environments. Into the Breach, from the creators of FTL, a mech tactics game against aliens in a randomly generated pixel art world. Starfall Tactics, a free-to-play, real-time war game that mixes tactical combat with spaceship customization and galactic conquest. Shardbound, mixing of tactics and collectible cards with six factions and Twitch integration. Artifact, the Dota card game from Valve that we haven't seen much of and isn't being received too well by the Dota community. Pit People, a hilarious tactics game set in a silly and surreal world that's in early access now. Wargroove, a turn-based strategy game for up to four players where you control an army in a colorful pixel art world. Overland, a squad-based survival game set in a procedural post-apocalyptic North America in a kind of Oregon Trail journey. Endstate, a classic turn-based tactics game where you manage and control your squad in various combat and intelligence operations. Phoenix Point, turn-based tactics and open-world strategy from the creators of the original XCOM with an alien threat and huge boss monsters. Phantom Doctrine, set in 1983 during the Cold War, this is an alternate history thriller where you lead a secret organization against a global conspiracy. Prodigy Tactics, currently in early access, turn-based team battles in a fantasy world with multiple characters. War Tile, a cooldown based digital board game where you control a warband of Viking figurines and cards inspired by Norse mythology in Early Access Now. And lastly, The Banner Saga 3, the conclusion to the mature turn based strategy adventure game which is steeped in Viking culture. And finally, some bonus mentions. Civilization 6 is getting an expansion called Rise and Fall, Hearts of Iron 4 is getting an expansion called Waking the Tiger. Stronghold Next was mentioned a few years ago, so there's a chance we might hear something about it this year, now that Stronghold Kingdoms is out on mobile. And Xenonauts 2, not really any major updates, but we could expect a 2019 release and more information through 2018, though nothing is confirmed at this point. And that's it! 30 plus upcoming strategy games that should be releasing through 2018 and some into 2019 depending on their developments. Which ones are you most interested in? Also, what's your favorite era when it comes to strategy games? Historic, sci-fi or fantasy? Personally, I tend to lean towards historic or fantasy. Now if you'd like to see more strategy content, check out my extensive Civilization VI coverage, some of my multiplayer Northgard games, Age of Empires stuff, and more right here on the channel. If you're thinking a game is missing, do check out the other list sorted by genre shown at the top of the video for many more upcoming PC games. Alright, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed it and found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video.